In this video, I wanted to show you how you can get your Flask application running on a service like Heroku, where you can just upload your code uh, and it should be running on the cloud uh, without too much worry about how the underlying infrastructure um, works. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading this image classifier that I made. Uh, and if this looks familiar to you, this is because uh, this is from a previous tutorial that I did uh, where I showed you how to create this Flask uh, application. So if that's something that you're interested in, then watch that first. Uh, but regardless of that, if you're just interested in how to get uh, any kind of Flask app, uh, and specifically if you're using something like TensorFlow or Keras, um, then this is going to show you how to get this onto Heroku. Um, so this is what this app does. So we choose a file, uh, and if I click, a, click the dog uh, and I hit predict image, um, it says the image is a pug and it's this certain. Uh, and then if I choose the other one, the cat, I think it says something like, yeah, so it says the image is a tabby. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, and I'm just using a pre-built model, uh, the ResNet 50 model. Um, I was previously using the VGG 16 one. Uh, and I'll show you why I switched over to the ResNet one. Uh, and it's kind of important to bear this in mind if you're planning on also using uh, Heroku. So without further ado, the first thing that you'll need to do is that you'll need to go over to heroku.com uh, and create an account. It's completely free uh, and I'm pretty sure you don't have to put in any credit card details. Uh, once you're there, you just want to, you'll, you'll go to this uh, page, which is your dashboard. Um, and you should be able to see that you can create a new app. So when we click that, we can give our app a name. Um, I think I'll name mine uh, image recognize. So is that available? It's not available. Put a one by it. There we go. That's available. Uh, just pick a region that's close to you uh, and then hit the create uh, app button. So at this point, you'll see there's a bunch of text in front of you. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is you can essentially follow uh, what's coming up here, except there's a few things to bear in mind if you're uh, using something like Keras and TensorFlow. Uh, so what you want to do is you then want to head over and download the CLI. So this is the command line interface. Uh, and this will make it pretty easy for you to deploy straight from uh, your local uh, repository here. So once that's installed, um, the next thing that you want to do is I'll, I'll stop this one. So this one that I showed you earlier was running locally. Uh, so if we go ahead and stop that, uh, and in fact, I'll make this, I'll make this a bit bigger. So I've already got the CLI, uh, installed. Uh, so what you then want to do is type in Heroku login. Uh, and what that's going to do, um, is it will pop up a page, uh, where you'll just need to log in to your dashboard again. Uh, and then that will mean that you'll be able to then upload your code directly from the command line here. So once that's all set up, uh, Heroku is now ready for us to use. So there's a bit of setup that we have to do within our application. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's just a little bit to tell Heroku how we want to deploy everything. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna want to install is G Unicorn. So we can do this using pip. So pip install G Unicorn. Um, you don't necessarily have to install it locally if you don't want to, but it makes it a bit easier. Um, I'll show you another way that you could do this as well. So what G Unicorn is, uh, you can see that I've already got it, is that it's, it's just a lightweight web server. Uh, it's pretty fast as well. And we're going to use that to serve our, our content here, to serve our Flask app. Uh, Flask comes in built with uh, a, a, like a development web uh, web server. Um, but for the purposes of deploying it on Heroku, we're going to use a proper one uh, and G Unicorn is pretty suitable for this. Um, so once we've done that, we one thing that Heroku needs is it needs to know what are all the dependencies that we need to install. Uh, and to do that, we can use the pip uh, freeze command. Uh, and what this will return is a list of all the dependencies that are currently installed uh, in this virtual environment here. Uh, and we're going to save that to a, a file called uh, requirements.txt and it has to be called exactly this. Uh, this arrow here uh, tells us to take the output of pip freeze and to put it into this file. Uh, so you see that when I run that, uh, there's a requirements.txt uh, file and we've got everything 
uh, that we used uh, in our project. So if you decided that you don't want to install gunicorn, you just need to add it to your requirements.txt file. Um, another thing to bear in mind when using Heroku is that if you are deciding that you want to use TensorFlow, you want to use TensorFlow, the CPU version. Uh, if you've got, let's say just this uh, in your requirements, go ahead and just change it to the CPU version. And the reason for this is because um, in the other version, so if you've just got this, uh, you're packaging all the libraries, uh, all the code that supports the GPU functionality. Uh, the issue with that is, firstly, you're not gonna be using any of that because Heroku doesn't support that. Um, and the, the main reason is that the, the base TensorFlow, the TensorFlow uh, GPU version um, has a, a lot of content. And so it's a bit too big to upload to Heroku. I think there's a 500 megabyte limit. Um, and you'll see that if you, if you do just use TensorFlow, uh, it will throw an error at you. Uh, so that's just something to bear in mind. So once we've created the requirements.txt file, uh, we're almost done. Uh, we need to create one more file and it's going to be called um, proc file. And what this will do is it'll just tell Heroku um, how do we want to start our application. Uh, and the first thing that we need here is to say that it's a web application. Uh, this is important because then Heroku will know, right, so this is a web application. We need to allow HTTP traffic. Uh, so that's very important that we do that first. Uh, and then we want to run this using gunicorn. Um, and then the next thing is that we need to do app colon app. Uh, and so the first app out of these two apps uh, is referring to this file app.py. Uh, if your one's called something different, let's say you called yours main.py, uh, then just change it uh, to main. Um, but in our case, it's app. So we'll go ahead. And then the second app, you might be wondering, what does that refer to? Uh, is that it's, look, it's referring to this object here, um, which is our, our Flask object. Uh, so if your one's called something different, typically we always call it app. But if it is something different, then that's what the second one is for. You can always rename it if you want to. Uh, so we want to go ahead and save that. Um, and so the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to initialize this as a Git repository. Uh, so you're going to have to go ahead and download Git uh, if you haven't got that already. Um, I'm pretty sure I made a tutorial, two tutorials on this um, a while back. So if you're new to Git or you've never used it, then feel free to watch that. Uh, but it's relatively straightforward. Uh, all we have to do once it's installed is uh, git init. Um, ah, my bad. I just realized uh, I've already done this. Um, so if you haven't done this, just do git init uh, and that will initialize the repository. I forgot that I'd already initialized this repository earlier. Um, and so the next thing that we need to do is we need to set our remote branch, our remote uh, repository to be the one that Heroku has. Uh, and this is where it's going to build our project. Uh, and you can see what you need to type in um, over here. So you need to type in Heroku git colon remote uh, dash a image recognizer one. And this is using the Heroku CLI that you would have installed uh, earlier. So if you copy and paste that, your project name will be something different to mine. Um, and then once that's done, you can hit enter. There we go. So it's set our remote uh, repository to be the one that Heroku has given us. Um, and then once that's done, uh, it's pretty much done. We just need to commit everything. So we can do git uh, add. So we'll add everything and then we'll do git commit or you can see what the status is. I might have committed everything. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like all of my, my code is committed. But all you have to do if yours is not is to do git commit uh, dash M and then put a commit message. So you could put initial commit. Um, I've already done that by the looks of it. So once that's done, you can see that the next command that you have to do is git push Heroku master. Uh, and something to bear in mind is that uh, I'm not using a master branch locally. Mine's changed to main. I think this is because uh, GitHub changed theirs to main. So I changed mine to automatically just call that call it main uh, to make it easier so just bear that in mind when you're doing yours uh, whether you're using whether your main branch is called master or whether it's called main uh, and then once that's done and it's pushed uh, this will now take a couple minutes to uh, install all the dependencies on Heroku 
uh, and in a moment it will be ready for us to have a look at. So we can see that it said that it's now deployed um, and if we go ahead and click on this link here uh, and hit open, uh, we can see that it's now uh, hosted on Heroku uh, and not on our local machine, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if we go ahead and I can show you again, we can choose a file um, and let's pick the dog. And if we predict the image, let's see what happens. It takes a little bit of time, uh, but bear in mind we are on the free tier. Uh, so I guess we can't complain too much. Uh, and it works in the same way. Um, one thing to note that I think I mentioned at the beginning was that I switched from VGG16 to ResNet. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, the size of the model uh, for VGG16 is huge. Um, and the amount of RAM that um, we have uh, on Heroku is only 500 uh, megabytes roughly. Uh, and you can see that the VGG16 model is already over that. Plus we've already got our application that we need as well. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. This is obviously a very big model. Uh, if you're using a smaller model, um, then it's fine. Um, I think that's typically the case. Um, but if you do have a large model, you'll either need to upgrade your, your uh, like, you know, to, to a paid version of Heroku, or it might be more suitable and cost-effective to just get a virtual uh, private server um, instead. Uh, and, and host everything yourself. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is um, how you would host something onto Heroku. Uh, you can see that it's probably quite easy as well to you know, make changes to your website. Uh, and then you, know, you just push the, the new code over to, to the Git, um, the, the Git repository that they've given you. Um, and then it's all up and running. Um, so let me know if you run into any problems, uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching.